Hello, Johnny Dankseed here. This is a tutorial and not financial advice. Hello, fellow investors, traders, Neuralink trading apes maybe. Um, this is a tutorial for how to install the amazing Game Stomp terminal by Didier Lopez on Windows. For those of you that don't know what this is, it's a very good tool that you can use to source data to assist you in becoming more informed for your investments. It is not financial advice, nor should it be taken as such, and neither is any of what this video is. Let's get started. Uh, this is on a clean bare bones Windows 10 installation. You're going to need a Python environment. Anaconda or Miniconda is recommended. I'm going to, however, walk you through installing build tools to avoid this error that I'm showing you right now. If any of this video is too fast for you, then feel free to pause or go back and review. You're going to need to download these build tools. Once you download them, start running them. And it's going to run an installer for you that's going to let you choose the build tools you're going to need. Depending on your download speed and your computer speed, a lot of these steps may vary in speed. On the left you need to choose C++ build tools. There are other environments here, but you don't need them. On the right, make sure you choose the 17.7.6.3 version. And this is the bare bones you'll need. Roughly 7 gigabytes of space. Again, this might take a while depending on your download speed. Once you're at this step, it's installed. You can hit the X and we'll continue on to installing Anaconda. Depending on the operating system you're on, you'll choose the installer for you. This tutorial should suffice for the 64-bit or 32-bit of Windows. Once you run the installer, almost all of the settings are going to, well, basically all the settings are going to be left as default. Make sure this one's checked, however, and that's to register Anaconda as your Python. If at any point any of these steps feel like uh, they're frozen, just give it a bit more time. Some of them uh, take a bit more time. This is for PyCharm, which we don't need. Uncheck these. I do recommend you look into PyCharm if you want to use Anaconda further. Um, in the Start menu, you'll now see that Anaconda has created a Start menu. But the main one we're interested in is the Anaconda prompt. And you can pin it or send it to your taskbar or wherever you need it. I personally like putting mine on the desktop. And this is where we're going to need to install the terminal. Double click it and run it. And we're going to follow the steps. Uh, type conda-v to make sure you have conda running and it will return the version to you. And now we're going to create the virtual environment. GST is going to be the name. You can change it to whatever you wish. I'm going to be using the default. Again, many of these steps may vary depending on your system specifications or internet connection depending on what part of the installation we're at. At any time you get a prompt to proceed it will say Y or N. Make sure to hit Y for yes and hit enter. Now we're going to activate the environment we created. And then we're going to install git
and again Y and enter. And now that gets installed, we're going to pull the repo. You can use the command here. And it'll clone the repo to your computer locally. Now we want to go into the folder Now we're going to install Poetry Now we're going to deactivate and then activate it again per the recommendation. This is it mostly if you're on Python 3.8. And then here's poetry install. Again, some of these may take quite a while, so go get a drink. Now that it's finally done, we're going to actually run the terminal itself. It might take a little bit to boot, but if you get this, it works. I'm going to quit out of it in order to enable the machine learning part. I will be showing you how to enable it, but I will not be using it. You're going to need to update the feature flags, which is in the game stomp terminal folder and look for feature flags and open it with any text editor and then you're going to be changing the flags there from false to true I personally like turning on the thoughts of the name you can go through the documentation and see what other features are available. Make sure you save it, close it. And another thing you're going to need to update at some point is your config terminal. And this is basically where all the API keys are stored. And per the documentation, it'll give you the links to where you can sign up. Uh, please do note that some of these have limited time or limited calls or limited uh, API requests. So use them wisely I guess you can obviously uh, pay for more more whatever the premium version of the API is now we're going to install the machine learning uh, requirements we're going to activate our terminal again and we're going to install it with the command listed here Again, this might take a while, depending on your system. At no point that this is happening, uh, do you, should you cancel it, please make sure to let it run. As of the current version that I'm installing right now for the tutorial, uh, the Facebook profit is currently giving me issues. I will try to do, uh, obviously don't panic and continue letting it run. I will do an update at some point in the future to fix this and address this. I do have it working on an older version of the terminal. So most likely it's temporary. 
So I'm going to close out the terminal and show you what it would look like if you wanted to just run it from scratch now that it's fully installed. So you would double click your Anaconda prompt and you want to activate your virtual environment and then you want to go into the folder. You can create a batch script to make this faster later. And then you want to run the Python command to run the terminal itself. Again, it may take a while depending on your system. Once it finally loads, I'm going to use the example commands that are provided in the documentation and you should be free to look through the documentation to find more. You always uh, should start by loading the ticker of interest that you're trying to get any sort of data for. And right now I'm just going to hit view to see the overall stock performance. This is a historical. You can zoom in. There's a save button at the bottom if you want to save a screen capture of the data. Close it out. You can load specific slices of historical data. Obviously consult with the manual. There's way more commands than the ones I'm using here. And obviously you have access to a lot of different intuitive tools that most people most likely haven't used yet so this should be something that hopefully enables all of you watching this tutorial to learn a bit more about your tree if you ever want to know more about a command use a hyphen h and it'll give you more information as to what additional data you can request from the commands Again, consult the documentation is the best way. I'm going to run one more example that's listed here in the GIF at the bottom of the GitHub website, and it's about price targets. And these are, for example, some commands that you have access to. And there's submenus to those. Right now I'm going to go into the due diligence and then I'm going to hit PT for price target. And this is an example of the price targets that different ratings might give it, different companies. Uh, obviously give back to the community and in this case uh, I highly recommend if you can, obviously, if you have the financial means, uh, buy him a coffee. I think he highly deserves it. It's a good piece of software. I definitely think if you don't have the means to contribute financially, you could obviously always support if you're a programmer or a coder. Um, there's a crypto wallet. And as always, remember, neither him nor I are financial advisors. We don't work for anybody as financial advisors. We don't take commissions or investment advice for financial advice. Um, trading involves risk. I'm sure you all can read up on it. There's resources on the web. Don't ever follow advice on the internet blindly. Always do your own investigative uh, due diligence. This is just another tool for your toolbox. Um, this is a link to the Discord. You can find the community that supports this project there. I hope this helped any of you traders out there. And as always, I hope if anything it pointed your rocket a little bit more upward in the overall trading. Thank you and I'll be making future tutorials to see if I show you guys how to use this tool but again I'll probably be refraining from using the prediction part of it. And of course a very special thank you to Didier Lopez because without him we wouldn't have the tool and I wouldn't be making this tutorial at all. So definitely thank you.